Hey, what's up guys? Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. In today's video, we are going to dive into Casper Network and the native token CSPR, go over some recent news and the price chart. All right, hope everyone's doing well today as we're basically two years from a variety of assets hitting their all-time high price and we are well into this bear market. We have some assets and alts retesting their bear market lows. There's some like Algo creating new all-time low prices, but then we have dozens of assets that have already retraced 200, 300, 600% plus, such as Injective, XDC, FAT, etc. Now we can all speculate when it'll be for the Bitcoin price chart to finally surpass and create a new all-time high price. Will it be in the next 8 months before the Bitcoin halving in April or will it be after? Regardless, I believe the Bitcoin price chart creates a new all-time high. And it's highly likely Bitcoin is here to stay, 10 plus years, Ethereum included, and a variety of other assets. But I'm most interested in finding alts that are well below a $1 billion market cap with ample funding, 40 plus engineers like Casper for the highest ROI possible. We know alts like ADA or Cardano did over a 160x last cycle from its all-time low price. Even HBAR did about a 60x from its all-time low. And even ALGO, which wasn't the best performer, still did a 20 to 25x from its all-time low. So when I see the Casper price chart that has never experienced a bull run because it was born at the beginning of the bear market, I'm super interested. And here we have ADA versus Casper both on the weekly. So this yellow moving average is the 50 week MA and then the blue is the 100. We can see ADA crashed 98% thus far for Casper because I don't want to use these crazy liquidity wicks where it took us to 65 bucks on Huobi or Wobi. We're looking at different structures. This clear distribution enters accumulation then finally breaks out. We have here clear distribution and sell-offs entering accumulation starting to get that tease over the weekly 50 but falling back below. And overall this structure reminds me a lot of ADA back in March 2020. We got above the 50 week but then started closing back below it. But we can see when we got this golden cross of the 50 and the 100 on the weekly time frame, ADA absolutely exploded. So in terms of this, this was accumulation. We can see we got the breakout, the back test, and we impulsed. I think Casper is still in accumulation. We are waiting for ample volume to break above these highs and actually create a new level of support. Here's the Casper Bitcoin price chart on the weekly time frame. You can see above we have some sell side imbalances and open fair value gaps. And not financial advice guys, but I believe the Casper Bitcoin price chart closes these gaps above. Even the weekly fair value gap from here is about 300% or a 4x. All the way up to this high would be 574% or over a 6.7x. And I really want to emphasize this level because right up there over a 6.7x is an open liquidity gap and also the 702 Fibonacci retracement is right at that level. Last cycle a variety of assets with their Bitcoin chart actually retraced up to the 702. And here's a quick example of the Cardano Bitcoin price chart. So the all time high to the cycle low drag all the way over wick to wick and we can see that we went exactly on the 702 Fibonacci retracement. So coincidentally this is very close to some open gaps on the Casper Bitcoin price chart. And even for ADA this was almost a 1500% move to the upside. Now I just put out this tweet discussing market capitalizations of Bitcoin, Ether, and a variety of assets and they've reached a full 4.236 Fibonacci extension last cycle. Here's the Bitcoin market cap high to low last cycle reaching a perfect 4.236. Here's the Ethereum market cap high to low reaching a full 4.236. And here's the Casper price chart a full 4.236 Fibonacci extension is super doable this is a 2.4 billion dollar market cap. And from current price all the way up, that is 500% or a 6x return. So you can take this 2.4 billion market cap divided by the circulating supply and you would get roughly 21 cents. And before we can talk about $1 or $3 plus in the future, we still have to get through a variety of levels and we're still in accumulation. But I wanted to note that a full 4.236 Fibonacci extension on Casper's market cap, just like Bitcoin, Ether and other alts have already hit, is 21 cents. Very close to this level up here where we had this double top in 2021. And once again, that's a 500% increase or a 6x return from today's price. And the craziest part is that's only a $2.4 billion market cap. Alts last cycle in the top 10 and 20 had $10 billion to $20 billion market caps. And on the high end, we had Cardano, Doge, and Solana reach anywhere from $75 billion to $99 billion market caps. And for $0.21, cents, that only requires a $2.4 billion market cap for Casper. And these alts last cycle absolutely skyrocketed, but I want to emphasize this was not enterprise adoption at scale. And as I always say, the enterprise market is the largest market in the world and it's the least penetrated in blockchain. We don't even have regulatory clarity. So if a variety of assets absolutely skyrocketed with exchange listings, a bullish cycle and crazy liquidity from Bitcoin, what do you think enterprise adoption can do at scale? And a lot of people really misunderstand the supply for Casper. Just to talk about Casper at that valuation that ADA, Doge, and Solana already hit, that would be roughly a 190 to 228x from today's price. So with that crazy market cap of 75 to 99 billion, that would be $68 for Casper. 
basically a 200x from today's price, which is crazy. And comparing circulating supply, ADA has a 35 billion circulating supply. When it had a 32 billion circ supply, it hit $3.10. Compare this circulating supply with HBARS, almost 33 billion, to Casper's at 11 billion. And remember, the total supply for ADA and HBAR are both higher. HBAR's total supply, which is still finite, is 50 billion. Well, Casper is sitting at a fraction of that. And here's an Excel sheet I made a while back for a previous video, but just looking at the total supply, not even circulating supply, and the 8% inflation rate. Casper won't even have the total supply that HBAR and Cardano have today for 13 to 14 years. And if we assume that still 70 to 75% of the total supply is stake bonded and locked to secure the network, that leaves a smaller fraction of actual available Casper. So once again, this is not a price prediction. This is discussing the valuation of Casper if it hit the market cap that a variety of assets have already hit. And I think it's super important to plot out the numbers for any holds that you have in any assets and look at the valuations and what's feasible. If you think one or three dollars is too crazy, well, what's feasible to you? Because we still have to retest that 18 to 20 cent level. But all in all, just looking at these levels, we're still in accumulation. We know that the first one million patents will be minted next month, supposedly. So fingers crossed. This is not up to Casper Labs. It's up to IPWE as the actual partner when they deploy. With the first 1 million of 25 million patents in total, companies including Nike, Toshiba, and Coke Industries, and this is the largest enterprise deployment on a public chain in history. So we know Casper hit the pivot and rejected, XRP did hit the pivot, rejected, and then impulsed all the way up to the R2 just like Injective. We have other assets like XTC which hit the R1. So the pivot level once again is about 6 cents. The weekly R1 is 10 cents and the weekly R2 is 13 cents. So there's a variety of levels including this weekly fair value gap right here right around 7 cents. So once we can break out of accumulation, flip this level and turn it into support, I'll get a lot more excited. For me personally, not financial advice, it is super easy to be a macro bull on Casper as we're just retesting lows. Once the Casper price chart starts hitting and flipping these levels into support at 7 cents and 10 cents, I'm not going to be buying. We've had over a year at these lows between 2 to 4 cents to accumulate. The only time I'll be buying more Casper is if we ever break 3 cents even at this support level here all the way down as you can see. So this is the last level of support. If Casper ever breaks below 3 cents even, I'll be going heavy. But for now, just stacking cash sitting on my hands. In the off chance that Bitcoin revisits the low 20s and does a sweep, then I'll absolutely buy. The only other time I'd be buying Casper over 3 cents is if it's a swing trade and I'm in another asset that just went up and I wanted to rotate that into something that's lagging. And in the meantime, I am just staking my Casper, earning over 10% APY, which auto compounds. And recently, with HBAR even lowering their staking rewards rate to, I believe, 2.5%, it just doesn't compare. Yes, I stake HBAR, but if you used an APY calculator and compared a 2.5% or 2% yield compared to 10%, the 10% is going to blow it out of the water, specifically when it's sitting at an all-time low price. So next up, we covered this in the past, but remember, Sarsen Fund said that Circle will be launching USDC on Casper Network as CSP. USDC, and this is expected to occur this calendar year. We have Jeremy, the CEO of Circle, right here saying that USDC is soon launching on six new blockchains, and I believe Casper is one of them. I also encourage you guys to go to Casper Labs and read through some of their recent blogs discussing invoice factoring and leveraging Casper Network. As we can see, this is a multi-trillion dollar market. The market for invoice factoring as a means of short-term business financing is expected to be more than double over the next decade, reaching $4.6 trillion by 2031. And during this presentation that was shared by Casper yesterday, the government of Telangana in India is using Casper Network, tokenized invoices for improved liquidity in secondary markets for factoring. So right there is a multi-trillion dollar market that will be leveraging blockchain in the future, and it will grow to a $4.6 trillion market alone in the coming years. So this is a great video by Joel right here, and he has 15 years experience at Cisco before Casper specifically with smart cities. And he shared a variety of things entering the public sector, working with governments, and how important it is for a permissionless network to set itself up for compliance to work with the public sector properly. So here are a variety of public sector blockchain use cases, ranging from food safety to supply chain to water quality and waste management to battery life cycle management to smart ports, to data sharing, to distributed energy resources. We know Siemens is working on a variety of energy patents as well. To leasing vehicles and vehicle ID and registration, autonomous vehicle data sharing, renewable energy certificates, secure and resilient voting, environmental monitoring, funding grant management, etc. So we talk about IPWE all the time. I can't wait for that deployment to actually start going because we've been talking about it all year. Metacask is another big one for high value assets. We have WiseKey right here, tracking goods and supply chain, connecting IoT devices and 
also why Sat with SpaceX minted the first NFT from space, and that was on Casper's network. You have Chengdu Chain in the blockchain service network in China. We have Hyperledger and IBM right here for atomic swaps to act as a bridge for different types of value and additional features for enterprises. And then an auto leasing company, tokenization of leasing contracts for better life cycle management. I've shared this company before, but they're under NDA, so I don't want to say anything until they release it, but we have talked about it. And then Casper Lab selected partners side by side AWS and Google Cloud. Next up, for BitGo, we have some big news. They have secured $100 million in a Series C funding round. BitGo is one of the largest digital asset custodians in the space for regulated custody, borrowing, and lending. And the good thing is BitGo integrated Casper a long time ago. We had Casper Labs and the Casper Association over at the Crypto Week in Madrid discussing the Casper Accelerate Grant Program. We had Ralph Kubli, a huge name and on the board of the Casper Association, speaking at the Digital Securities and Tokenization Conference in Frankfurt. We can see Casper down here side by side with Nucleus Finance, HSBC, State Street, and they spoke alongside Siemens as well. And I can't emphasize how big Nucleus Finance could be with the Actus Standard covering 98% of all global financial contracts, period. So that's a huge deal. This is built on Casper. Now we know Casper was at the Actus Conference over in Washington, D.C. a few weeks back. Check out this clip. I think the regulators play here an, an imminent important role. As I showed today, such a system as Actus would have given the proper signals maybe one and a half years earlier that this bank needs to be fixed. With Actus, they would have seen a year before that the capital wasn't good anymore. So with Nucleus Finance, Casper Network, and Actus tokenizing these cash flows, this would give banks much needed cash flow insight that could prevent all of these bank collapses that we've seen this year and last year alone. So getting all of this formatting and data onto a similar standard and becoming interoperable with other networks, that's going to be a huge deal. And here's another great clip of the Casper Association over at NFT New York highlighting Casper's features and its NFT standard. Hi, it's Joe from the Casper Association. We're at NFT NYC. Here's three reasons why you should build your NFT project on Casper. Number one, upgradable smart contracts. When you build on Casper, you'll be able to update your code as needed so that your project can evolve. Number two, community. Casper has a growing community of developers and builders who are known for being highly supportive and willing to share insights and resources. Number three, enhanced security. Casper's NFT standard offers unparalleled security like contract level permissions, multi-signature wallets, and cryptographically verified authenticity and ownership. And when deploying a smart contract on Casper, setting all of your contract permissions, having a multi-signature wallet for an enterprise user, you can set it up and customize it how your specific department or business needs. You can set up the entire contract exactly how you see fit and then even leave room for updating in the future if your needs change. And yes, Casper has the ability to make an immutable smart contract that can't be tampered with, but you also have the option when you're deploying to make it mutable and able to be updated in the future. And right now, Ethereum and a variety of other L1s cannot upgrade smart contracts. It's not simple with Ethereum. You can't just make a few clicks. You have to reset up all of the infrastructure. This takes time. This costs money. You'd either have to do contract migrations, data separation, proxy patterns, strategy patterns, or even these diamond patterns that are explained on the Ethereum website. It's a huge hassle and enterprises to upgrade their infrastructure don't have time to play with this. And just a few more things and we'll call it a day. Huge shout out to the X Frontier on Twitter and YouTube, an absolute must follow for Casper. A while back, Casper Labs partnered with Shift Network, a public blockchain designed to aggregate and embed trust and validation into public-private permission permissionless networks. Shift X is a composable compliance opt-in layer that allows virtual asset service providers, or VASPs, to comply with KYC and AML regulations. Even recently, with the SEC, a variety of exchanges like KuCoin have kicked U.S. residents, forcing everybody to KYC. KYC is being a bummer, but pay attention to the projects that are working with these virtual asset service providers and working with regulation because those are going to be the ones that gather the most liquidity and also likely the value. And remember that Casper is already SOC 2 compliant on the verge of reaching SOC 2 Type 2 compliance. When this happens, we'll be the only blockchain organization to hold this designation, further cementing our reputation as the enterprise-grade blockchain. So all these enterprises leveraging Casper Network or other hybrid instances are already compliant leveraging it. And to finish up today's video, this Casper Labs blog, Web 2.5 goes mainstream. 
So we talk about going to Web 3, but what is Web 2.5? It is the bridge between Web 2 and Web 3. It refers to integrating blockchain technology artifacts like tokens, smart contract, and Web 3 apps within the existing Web 2 applications. It's about giving end users greater ability to own and control their own content and assets while also introducing greater levels of data transparency and immutability. And Gartner, one of the biggest in the world, recently included Web 2.5 in its seminal hype cycle for open source software. And Casper Labs was identified and named as a sample vendor in the emerging category. The enterprise networks that succeed are going to be those that can integrate easily with existing tech stacks. Integrating Web3 tech with existing enterprise technology stacks marks a significant milestone in the market's evolution. Businesses today are facing ongoing challenges to do more with less, requiring leaders to seek new solutions that will allow them to remain competitive. At Casper Labs, we're delivering blockchain software and services that drive revenue and radical efficiency for companies. And remember the clip of the Sarsen Funds interview I shared a while back that that one bank for actual payments could be saving, what was it, 7 to $9 billion per year leveraging blockchain. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate if you could hit the like button, let me know your thoughts down below, and my link tree is linked in the top of this YouTube video description. With all links, crypto resources, and discounts. I'll catch you in the next one.